Hi, my name is Laura and I'm the owner of Front Office Rocks, an online training resource for dental teams. And I'm also an office manager in a dental office in San Diego, California. I am an EagleSoft user and love EagleSoft as our practice management software and wanted to have the ability to help my team learn EagleSoft better, but found that there wasn't a lot of resources teaching my team how to implement EagleSoft in their day to day. So I decided to make my own. I'm doing videos to help my team get better at implementing EagleSoft. I'm not sponsored by anyone. This is on my own to not only help my team implement EagleSoft better in their day-to-day -day jobs, but now for you to be able to implement this in your practice. In this video, I want to go over how to enter a new person into EagleSoft and what all the fields mean. Now, there's different ways you can go about doing this. You can add them from when you're in the schedule or you can add them in the just by going to file or person and entering a new person. Um, I'm not gonna go into that with this video, but I just wanna break down what each one of these fields are and walk through it with you guys. So uh, let's say that I'm setting up a new person and I'm gonna call this person test Tester, tester, that's first and last name. The middle initial can go here. Preferred name is what we would want to call the patient. So let's say tester likes to go by the name test. Or let's say um, the person has a nickname like they are Joe. You could put in here what they prefer to be called by. Now, what we do here is I leave it as none in my office unless we know that the patient prefers to be called by doctor or Mrs. or Mr. So usually when we first introduce ourselves to the patient, if you introduce yourself and they say, yes, I'm Dr. Tester, you're going to want to make sure that we put in there Dr. Tester so that the rest of the team knows that's how the patient wants to be uh, you know, referred to. Now, if this person is the patient, so they're going to have the patient selected. The time that this would not be selected is if you're entering this person just to be the responsible party or the policyholder. So if they're not actually going to be a patient in your practice, then this is not connect, or this is not selected. Now, you have to be careful later when you're going through trying to find people um, in your EagleSoft, if they are not selected as a patient, they're not going to come up on your patient list. So when you're searching for somebody, let's say Tester Tester, Mr. Dr. Tester, um, was just the policyholder for somebody and now is becoming a patient. Well, he's already in your system. All you have to do is find him now and select that he's a patient. The next thing here is policyholder, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute when we get over to insurance, but policyholder basically means that this person holds the insurance for themselves or for their family. So Dr. Tester is the one who has the insurance through his employer, so he is the policyholder. If he gets his insurance from his wife, then he's not the policyholder, and we're going to put his wife over here in the policyholder section. And then responsible party is the person responsible for this person's account. So in our office, what we do is the adult, of course, is their own responsible party. Typically, unless there's a special needs situation or some reason that somebody else needs to be the responsible party. And then when you have a child, what we typically do is we will pick one of the parents to be the responsible party. And we usually pick the parent who's responsible for the bills and the appointments, the ones we talk to. Um, usually it's the mom, uh, but not in every case. Now, remember that the policyholder and the responsible party don't need to be the same person. So let's say you have um, a divorced family. The dad holds the insurance for the family, so he's the policyholder. So you would make him the policyholder, but mom is the one who handles all the schedule and the bills. And so mom is the responsible party. So it's important to know the difference with those. If you want to make somebody else a responsible party, you just click on this hyperlink. You find the person that's in your system and you make them the responsible party. And then, of course, you're going to do, you know, the I don't even know what address that is, but the address, the zip code, home phone number, work phone number cell phone number, and I'm still surprised they have pager, um, but we have all three of these. Now, it's important that we get the cell phone number because if you are 
Uh, working with a company like Revenue Well or any other appointment reminder service, you're going to want to have the cell phone number in here so that the patient can receive text messages. Plus, we want to have a couple of forms of communication to reach the patient anyway. Um, more and more people aren't having their home phone, and they may or may not give you their work phone, but it's vital that you get their cell phone. And if they still have a pager, then they need to call 1980 and, and, and turn it back in. Of course, you want to put if they're male or female, if they're what their marital status is. Now, this isn't necessarily super important except for insurance. So if they're married, we know um, if they're married to the policyholder. And also it helps when you know if they're widowed because then you don't accidentally say something inappropriate. Um, we want to put in their date of birth right there and then their social security number. <clears throat> now, some people may or may not give you their social security number, which is fine depending on your office policies. But if they have dental insurance, then you need to make sure you're getting a, an ID number if we don't have an ID number, we have to have their social security number because there's no way to bill the insurance if we don't have an ID number or a social security number. So this is usually something that um, you can kind of identify if the patient's going to be trouble or not, if they really push back on this and they want you to bill their insurance, yet they don't want to give you a social security number. So that's where that goes. Chart ID, there's various different ways that you can use this. In fact, if you're watching this video and you have comments of how you guys use it in your office, please do that. Um, you can use it for, I've heard people say things like cash patient, so they put in the word cash. I've heard offices that rate patients based off of um, how good they are about showing up to their appointments. They get a grade, basically A, B, C, D. Uh, there's various different ways you can use chart ID. It's not necessarily that you need to, that it has to be filled in any specific way. Driver's license goes here if you collect that from your office. And then for me, one of the most important things is to make sure that you have the email address in here because this is how we're going to stay in touch with our patients. We want to mark that they receive emails and that they receive text messages. Nowadays, there's no excuse to not get an email address from a patient. Everybody has an email. And if you just explain it to the patient, if they don't have it filled out on the paperwork, that this is our way that we confirm appointments with you, that we can send you reminders for your appointments. This is the best way for us to, without having to pick up the phone and call you all the time, get you the information you need. And again, this is usually most patients aren't going to have a problem with it. Um, but you, you know, you definitely want to make sure you explain it to them in a win-win situation so that they know why it's beneficial to give you their email address. And if you find out as you're doing this that you have missing email addresses or cell phone numbers, then I recommend that you take the time as the patients come in that haven't given them to you and you get them from them. Now this is, we have the newest version of EagleSoft and whenever you watch this video, it may or may not be new, but some um, insurance or some EagleSofts don't show this primary, secondary, and supplemental. If you have an older version of EagleSoft, you're just going to see the primary insurance and the secondary insurance, which is right here, primary and secondary, which means basically the patient has one insurance, that's the primary, and secondary insurance, that's the one that goes, it goes to secondary, secondarily, um, if once the primary has paid or denied or whatever they're going to do. Usually patients don't have two that are themselves, so in this case, you know, they might be the policyholder of the primary, and then the secondary might come from their spouse or their significant other. So it's important to know which is the primary, which is the secondary. In these videos, I'm not going to go into how to know the difference. If you want more training on that, of course, that's what I offer on Front Office Rocks. But this is where you pick primary and secondary. Now, I'm not going to go into picking insurances in this video. I'm going to do a next another video specifically how to pick the insurance because it's a really important and if you're not picking the insurance correctly you really really can mess up your database so you want to make sure that you understand this before you start adding insurance and then new with EagleSoft is the supplemental insurance so if a patient has supplemental insurance you now can add that to this um, this category or section right here and then when it comes to calculations there's some more information here so primary secondary and supplemental up here, we never use in our office. Now, I've heard other offices who have used it. You should be able to put in um, some sort of a note that you can pull from uh, if you want to, let's say, look for opportunities uh, for people who want to whiten their teeth or, or they, they have an interest in Invisalign. 
I've never used this section, so I can't tell you how it works, um, but you definitely want to, if you think that this is something you want to use, get on the phone with um, EagleSoft support uh, or join on Facebook, Andre's Field Service EagleSoft group. You have to search for it, but it's um, Andre, A-N-D-R-E, um, EagleSoft Field Group is what it's called. Sorry, EagleSoft Field Group. And he gives you all the advanced training on things like this and how offices might use this field. All right, what this is, is the next recall. This is set up by when, this is when the patient's due for their next recall. They're due for their next cleaning. So as a new patient, there's nothing in here yet. Now, let's say you have somebody that tells you they just had a cleaning in June and their next cleaning is gonna be due in November. You could fill this in. Or once a recare re or a cleaning or something has been walked out from your practice, it's automatically going to update this date. Now, where the update comes from is in the preferences button. There'll be another video specifically on these buttons. So if you want to learn what all these buttons are, watch the other video. But the recall date is when the patient's due. This is, if this patient had appointments scheduled, it would be listed right here. So their next preventative appointment and their next regular appointment. And it shows you the dates of their appointments. So when you're talking to this patient, you can look right here to see their next appointments. And it pulls preventative or regular based off of the codes you put in the appointment. So if you put in the appointment that they're coming in for a profi, that's gonna update the preventative. If you put in there that they're gonna come in for a filling, it's updating the next regular. And they'll if they have two appointments or whatever, then those will be updated here, okay? And then lastly, not lastly, then the next part is the HIPAA, okay? So this is HIPAA privacy authorization and consent form. Usually these are all signed when the patient comes in for the first appointment. And you may update them depending on your state law in your office once a year, once every two years, once every three years. So then you'd wanna update the dates on these. And so this is just, you select these and the date that the forms were signed. And then lastly, if the patient has other family members that they're attached to. So let's say that this tester, test, tester, tester, doctor, tester had three children that he was the responsible party for. His three children would be listed here. You'd be able to right click on it. If you can see there's a right uh, red part of my right button, when there's that's there, you can right click on that mouse and it will give you a list to switch to the other person. So just make sure you take note. This is the basics of the appoint or the new person. Um, this is super important to fill out really well, especially the first time. Make sure you don't have misspellings in the patient's name. They don't like it. Their email address. Make sure you're getting the phone number in there correctly. We're going to talk about insurance in another video, but make sure you're doing that correctly. And take the time to fill this out well the first time so that you don't have to go back and fix things later or you find out later patients don't show up to their appointments because we didn't have the right email address in there. All right, so that's the basics for entering a new person into EagleSoft. Thanks for listening. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is a resource that I've developed for my team, but I wanted to share it with your team because I know what it's like to be in the dental office day to day and how to make this help us do our jobs better. So please make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can see more videos coming your way. Put comments at the bottom to let us know how you're implementing this part of EagleSoft in your practice. And if you want to learn more about how to implement great training in your dental office, you can find me at frontofficerocks.com.